the Pew Scarpa story is making something out of nothing. Now, some people may accuse us of being quirky, and, you know, I wouldn't entirely disagree with them, but we do really try and make it into something very practical. We don't just want to do singular buildings. We want to make really good communities. Some people look at our projects and say, oh, that looks really fun. But we're dead serious about everything that we do. We are very much involved in our environment and are curious about it. Kind of have an ongoing research, in some ways not project related, where we're doing things that just interest us. When we see a material, we don't really take it for what it is. We look at a material and try to be really objective about it and see the beauty in the material itself. We were doing a lot of edit studios. Provide a subdued, diffuse light. And people don't really notice their ping pong balls until they walk up close, you know, and then they say, oh my gosh, that, those are ping pong balls. I had always been interested in a soft building. We made a lot of phone calls to broom manufacturers, and, you know, I think they sensed industrial espionage. Like a lot of our work, we're experimenting, but we try and do it in a manner that really makes sense. I was determined to find something beautiful about stucco. Basically turn this inside out. So the finish of the exterior actually became the stucco oozing through the lath. We were just revealing what was already there, a bit like psychoanalysis. We're trying to think of a way to get natural light from an office into the rest of the space. I told him, I said, I'm thinking Dixie Cups. And he, he just flat out told me, you are not doing Dixie Cups in my space. Turns out he now plays with our building by changing those Dixie Cups often. We really want people to use their space that way and have people be able to change their environment as their mood says they need to change it. Colorado Court's uh, affordable housing project. When they passed it, they sort of their closing statement was, uh, we want to have it green too. She had no idea what she was going to get. We're not really trying to be revolutionary. We're just trying to examine what the status quo is, what the alternatives might be. We try to collaborate more with cities, with, um, with vendors to leverage their information and knowledge to really create something that's transformative. We really try to deliver more than uh, what's asked of us. Being a smaller firm, we as principals can be heavily involved in each and every project. Do we do every last thing? Absolutely not. Our whole studio is intimately involved. We can move quickly. We're sort of like a um, kid's soccer team in a way. You know, they sort of all move around the soccer ball as a big clump, you know? To be on top of it when things go a little cattywampus. Angie is very direct, very determined. Relentless about getting things done and making them right. And Gwen's a, he's a good mediator. He's someone who will just stop what he's doing at the drop of a hat and help you solve a problem. He's not conservative as some might think an engineer would be. Oh, he's a fabulous designer. He knows why he's doing things. So we don't let Larry go to the building department. <laughs> One of the really satisfying aspects of the work that we do, which I think is important in why we receive this award is our involvement in in the community. Part of what we do being on advisory boards or planning commissions is to help design our cities. I believe that the real power in any, anything is in policy. And we need to educate the client in the complexities of what it takes to really make something worthwhile. Um, you know people who visit our building may not remember what it looks like but they'll never forget being there.